Unity, Judy, and Destiny, baby. It's time for another episode of the Barnacle Inspiration Series, and today we will be talking all about Toa Mox. Got a few Toa Mox today to cover, and we're going to do like we always do. Inspire you to build some cool Bionicle Mox yourself, and get some of those creative juices flowing, inspiring a little bit of positivity and fun. And yeah, hopefully if you're planning on building some Toa Mox, this gets, uh, gets you going, gets you some ideas. So let's begin with the first one here. We've got a mock by Mr. Boltron, and it's called Tabhura, the Spirit of Deserts. So what I love a lot about this, I think it's quite unique, is I, I really love what he's done with the mask design on this mock. I, I really love how it flows so well in with all of the, the different kind of uh, tan, well, it's really kind of just one tan cloth element to my knowledge. Maybe it's two. But the tan cloth element there just being wrapped around like he's walking through a desert and he's got some cloth just to shield parts of his body from harsh sands or sandstorms, stuff like that, is really unique and clever. And I love how that gold Krana piece there almost kind of looks like uh, different you know cloth elements kind of folded around the mask with just little gaps in the eyes that he can kind of see through and uh, his body's protected from the sands. But I also love the fact that uh, this mock has sort of this uh, cool kind of uh, switch of masks here so that when the cloths aren't wrapped around his face, he actually has a, a distinct mask design. He has a really clever use of the Krana, which is sometimes a piece that's just a little bit more difficult to use. They're just, uh, they're just kind of different, those parts. Um, but this is a really fantastic use of them, that's for sure. I also love that he's used some of those Vorox uh, uh, Skrull armor pieces here. They had this beautiful kind of brown and tan marble texture to them, and they're just beautiful pieces. And they almost kind of look a little bit like they've been kind of damaged a little bit by the sand or sandstorms. You know, maybe as the sandstorms have hit this uh, this Toa's body, they've kind of um, you know lost some of the paint that they had on. Do Bionicles have paint? I guess they're kind of just born with whatever color armor they've got. Are they born with armor? Do they put armor on? What a good question. Well, regardless, I like the fact that the sand has sort of, you know, damaged his body in some fashion or kind of chipped his paint or whatever term you use that fits with Bionicle lore, because I don't know. That's so interesting. Is chipping paint like just having sand, like, like wind burn on your skin, but like sand burn, I guess? Hmm. I don't know. That's cool. <laughs> Regardless, I like that. It looks a little bit sort of uh, damaged by the sand, and that, that uh, is creating this really cool aesthetic, that's for sure. Something else I love is the lower arm design on this mock here, how it really beautifully transitions from that small CCBS shell piece into uh, one of the 2x2 two two round brick pieces. Uh, and that's as simple as, you know, putting a ball joint on the bottom of that uh, CCBS um, shell piece, putting in an axle and then attaching it onto that 2x2 two two, uh, system piece there. And it works really well. Beautiful te uh, sort of consistency with textures between those two pieces, and it's a great way to transition from Bionicle into system there. It's uh, just a, a great idea and something you could easily do yourself if you're looking to integrate a little bit of system into a mark. Uh, it's a simple strategy. It's cool. It's a really, really nice representation of a Toa uh, that is, you know, uh, more in tune with the deserts and things like that. Uh, very, very cool. Let's move on to the next mock here. Now, this one is by Cone Man 8, and this is called Puza the Toa of Poison. Some awesome stuff going on here. First thing that immediately grabbed me on this mock is the really cool kind of like uh, robotic eye that this mock has got. Whether that's, uh, you know, like Kupaka, like it's sort of built into the mask and it's just a part of his body, or it could be some sort of little uh, adaptation, you know, a little additional enhancement that kind of pops down and can pop back up. Either way, though, it looks really cool, and it's just a unique addition as well. really helps to tie in the color scheme too, which is a really unique color scheme. I love the, the silver with the little hints of that trans light green in there. kind of gives this sense of um, kind of like an industrial look with that sort of more metallic silver, and then the, it kind of almost looks like oozing poison or oozing liquid kind of... Uh, you know, dwelling beneath, especially with the color blocking, how a lot of that uh, trans yellow is underneath uh, a lot of this silver. Not always, but uh, in certain areas it looks like that. So it kind of gives me this uh, imagery of that, you know, bubbling chemicals in a, an old abandoned warehouse or something, which kind of fits with that idea of poison, which you know, is the element of this mark. You know, the toxic elements, that sort of stuff, maybe toxic waste, that sort of thing. Uh, that's a very clever way of integrating the color scheme here, and it fits really well for a poison as an element. You know, my mind, because I like Pokemon, always goes to, like, purple for an element for poison. But um, this is a more unique way of doing poison as an element on a Toa, and it uh, works really well, I think. 
I also like that this mock has what appears to be a stinger tail. It's a little hard to tell in this image, but uh, from what I'm seeing, you only had one image in the email, but from what I'm seeing, it looks like uh, it is a bit of like a stinger tail of some kind. Um, again, another great way of doing, uh, you know, representing poison, you know, like the venom or you know, toxic venom, that sort of thing that uh, could be associated with uh, bugs and spiders and other, you know, scorpions and things like that. Um, very unique, very cool. Another thing I like too, and this one might be a little bit more of a stretch, but uh, I think it might be a deliberate choice. It's cool. You know, putting little like chains and, uh, you know, we see this chain on one of the arms, a chain that appears to be on the weapon as well. And chains to me kind of can evoke sort of uh, you know, elements of like punk or grunge and, uh, you know, other, other sort of um, aesthetics that you see in the real world. Uh, and, you know, also elements of sort of the, the cloth behind this as well. You could kind of argue that that's sort of evoking a sense of kind of like gangs and, yeah, you know, kind of a, a punk rock aesthetic, which from a certain point of view, and this is more of a sort of specific stereotype, so I'm not going to kind of endorse that stereotype, but just going off of stereotypes, you can argue that certain points of view argue that that is like a, a toxic community or a toxic... Um, attitude or whatever i don't necessarily agree with that of course but you know from a certain point of view you could argue that so i like that uh, kind of playing with the definition of toxic and that relating back to poison and stuff like i said that might be a little bit of a stretch it has some chains on it it's probably just chains it's not some deep-seated uh, political ploy at uh, punk culture and stuff like that no that's I, I don't mean it like that but um you know i think that is at least an interesting way of looking at stuff and maybe if you do want to play around with some sort of like toxic culture and you are building a tower of poison you could somehow implement little elements of that i don't know again like i said this might be a little bit of a stretch and i don't want to insult any you know cultures or anything like that or subcultures or whatever whatever the appropriate term is but hey maybe there's something like that in there or maybe not but hey interesting concepts you can be playing with at least so an awesome toa mock here let's move on to the next one and this is by alex park designs and it's called toa krenika so now the element for this Toa is a Toa of Sonics, which is really cool. And I think this is a very unique take on doing a Toa of Sonics as well. Uh, the fact that it has these speakers and other sort of cables and things like that. Uh, very clear that, you know, sound waves and all that sort of stuff. A uh, great representation of that element, that's for sure. And something else that I love so much about it is this mock primarily is just uh, black in its color scheme. And, you know, it's just one color. You know, you could argue, yeah, why not add another pop of color in there somehow and you know, spice it up a little bit. But it does. But it's through additional elements, which you could argue with the weapons. It's got these interesting gauntlets, these sort of uh, speakers at the back of the mock, which also kind of look like kind of like a power source of some kind, just the way that they're kind of glowing green. And so to some degree, yeah, the weapon is adding an additional layer to the color blocking on this mock and giving it an additional color of the, you know, trans yellow and, um, or tra not trans yellow, sorry, trans green, always make that mistake, uh, and little bits of gray and a few other things as well. And so it is spicing it up a little bit. So that's a unique way that you could approach a color scheme. If you have a mock that is just one color, maybe the weapon on top of it could be that additional color. And maybe that weapon is also saying a lot about the, the elemental power of the mock or instead saying a little bit about um, their personality as well. You know, you kind of do get a sense of a personality from this weapon here. It's, yeah, it's cool. It's unique. I also like too that uh, it almost sort of appears that this this mark kind of the the hair almost sort of flowing out of the mask there almost looks a little bit like it's like power cables or some sort of uh, you know electrical cables to plug in the speakers and stuff and those are also seeming to be used as sort of weapons on the gauntlets as well um, so I like that idea too of having uh, certain elements of the mark like hair or other more you know, typical things like that actually having a more kind of practical use uh, it's just unique it's cool it's an, an interesting take on doing that making them uh, you know, basing them off of power cables and stuff like that very unique and very cool and honestly a really unique and cool take on a uh, toa of uh, sonics really really heavily playing off of the element here it's super cool to see on to the next mock now this is by the mug bearer and it's called toa komas so a really unique mask design on this mock and of course the mug bearer always builds his mocks on some sort of digital rendering system whether that's studio ldd or you know a different program that i'm not aware of there's all sorts of different ways that you can do so and uh, you know if you want to go and download one of those um, projects and build digitally that's uh, something you can always do and it's uh, definitely a fun way you can do so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute we'll just put a pin in that one for now but yes, this mask here is more, you know, focusing on using different system elements here. Uh, and it looks fantastic. And hey, maybe that's something you could do 
but not in the digital format and do it in the uh, in real bricks building a more system focused bionicle mask because yeah you can achieve some really unique looks with it you can use a lot of sort of smaller pieces as well which can uh, really help to pack in the detail and you know maybe you can actually get a really unique facial expression or just a unique shape to it that kind of evokes a specific personality or attitude for the mock um it can work really well you know this sort of face design here has this really beautiful kind of um almost sort of sympathetic and uh, loving or kind look to it. Uh, but also he looks like he might be a little bit more smart, uh, a little bit, you know, fairly intelligent as well. He has a lot of personality behind this that, uh, you know, a typical Bionicle mask as well also, of course, has a lot of personality, but uh, there's a lot more that you can pack in with the System 1 to some degree. And so it's really cool to see that being used so well here on this mock. Great little pouch design here as well. I love that, using a bunch of clip pieces and what appears to be some mixel joints as well and giving him this little uh, kind of uh, waist backpack kind of pouch, uh, whatever you want to call it. It looks really cool. It's a very fun, different addition there. That's, again, something you could easily do on a, a typical Bionicle mock as well. It doesn't have to be something you're doing digitally. And speaking of building a, a digital mock, uh, obviously this mock uses a bunch of pieces in colors that don't exist in the colors that they're in. And that's one of the benefits of uh, building a digital mock is you can... Uh, uh, move away from limitations that the you know real pieces have, whether it's color limitations or certain ways of attaching pieces and stuff like that. Uh, you can definitely play around with that sort of stuff. But yeah, that being said, this color scheme here of what what uh, you know more or less looks like sort of silver or gray uh, combined with some sand blue or uh, maybe a, another different shade of blue. But that that to me is what those colors look like. They might have a bit more of a metallic sheen to them uh, on this digital render here. But uh, you could pretty effectively build uh, a mock in this color scheme if you like it and it's actually a really nice color scheme those colors are close enough to each other that they complement each other but also you know a little bit of a departure from each other as well so they also sort of um you know effectively work off of each other at the same time it's just really cool to see so yeah, a really well-built digital mock here and of course never forget to build some digital mocks it's a, a fun way to play around that's for sure nice work mug bearer on to the next mock here and this is by librarian bot and it is called Ravi. So what immediately grabbed me about this mark is it has such a cool weapon and maybe a weapon is a little bit up for debate here but uh, it has a flute. Never seen a flute on a bionicle before that's so unique so obviously that could be more of a musical instrument maybe this mark is more of a pacifist and he just plays his songs but uh, maybe it's a uh, you know, some sort of uh, crazy cool weaponized flute that uh, you know with the power of sound and the power of song he's able to damage you and hurt you with it or something cool some crazy bard ability or something like that i love it it's cool it's unique you know whether it's a weapon or not it's still just not something you see every day and it works really really well i also love to uh, the little addition of the little uh, wing pieces here uh, towards the feet kind of giving him uh, yeah, a bit of like a sort of winged foot look that you might see on certain uh, you know, marvel characters like namor or you know, other different uh, gods out there in mythology as well i think mean, it's a, a really fun little addition there he also said that was a little bit of an accident here when he was building this, um, just that there happened to be two pinholes on the feet there and it just fit him in and it worked really well. So I always love a little happy accident like that. And another thing that's really cool about this mock is the color scheme, the dark green, the old gold, and a little bit of black thrown in there. It works well. It's a bit more of a sort of uh, duller color scheme, duller in terms of it's just, you know, sort of darker colors there. Um, but it works really well. They all work off of each other very nicely. It's a bit more of a distinct and unique color scheme too. It's just nice to see. Pretty cool, and a great weapon. I can't get over how cool that is. Next mock here. This one is Toa Aparu, and it is by... Sorry, it is by Toa Aparu, and this is Puata, Tower of Light. Really simple but effective wing design here. Just works really well, getting a bunch of these connector pieces that naturally have that angle to them, and putting these blades on it, and you get this beautiful kind of angled wing look. I almost kind of like the idea too, especially with this black background. You can kind of almost imagine those... Uh, those black connector pieces kind of just fading away and it kind of looks like these wings are just kind of floating here like maybe they're actually sort of separate blades and they just kind of float behind the mark and you know they're more of a an aesthetic look for the wings not actually practical wings kind of like that idea it just looks cool of course you know you have to kind of squint your eyes slightly if you want to do that but uh, yeah from depending on the angle you're looking at the photo it could look like it's just blending into the background like that and it's a fun little addition and a, a more unique way of approaching a wing design it's pretty cool like that this mock has a staff as well, that more angelic look to a marker. Staff just fits them well. I also really like how the hips on this mock are designed, and the, the upper legs as well, using uh, those mutter feet towards the back there, uh, those claw, those sort of larger claw pieces there, and kind of planting them behind uh, those sort of shoulder armor pieces that you see on a bunch of um, Star Wars Ultra Build sets. 
it's just a very nice design there and it also creates this sort of more rounded hip design and kind of gives a slight hourglass more slender shape to this this female mock here which you know when you're looking at male and female anatomy more of an hourglass shape is more your sort of typical uh feminine design for you know of course Everyone comes in different body shapes and sizes, that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, when you really look at the difference between a male and female body, that's the sort of uh, look that you go for when you're drawing kind of character designs and things like that. I've gone into more detail about this sort of stuff in um, the kind of female mock-focused uh, Bionicle Inspiration series episodes. So if you want to kind of dive a bit more into that, uh, that's definitely the place to look for it. But, uh, yeah, a really effective design here. And a great colour scheme too, of course, fitting that Tower of Light uh, look. Works really well. Gold and yellow there. Gold and yellow. Gold and white. But hey, if you wait long enough, that white might fade into more of a yellow. So I wasn't that wrong, but just give me 20 years. But no, very, very cool Tower of Light here. On to the final mock now. This is by Crow, and it is called Hafu. Love the hammer on this. I feel like this is almost uh, one of those really cool weapons that uh, very effectively represents the character and almost seems like an extension of the character, you know? Kind of like, you know, Thor with his magic hammer as well. It's, uh, you know, to some degree, a major, major part of the character. To, I don't know, at least kind of get that vibe uh, here from this weapon on this mock here. It's very fitting with the kind of bulkier character design as well and it's also just very well designed using some of these tire pieces here uh, and then adding in this sort of black uh, brown wooden hilt to it as well. It just looks fantastic. Great color scheme on this one too. Tan and black just works really well and uh, really cool to see Onawa G2's uh, mask being used here. It uh, really works well. It does have this more sort of large strong presence to it which you know this character does look like more of your muscular powerhouse sort of character here uh, and that's also kind of very effectively represented too in the sort of stockier shoulders uh, and uh, upper kind of chest here he does have this very you know buff powerful look especially in that area of the mock which is yeah really helping to uh, you know like i said it kind of ties in with this really strong and sturdy hammer he has this very strong and sturdy look, and it's being reflected in the weapon, the mask, the shoulders, the chest, you know. It's a really sort of strong presence to the character, but at the same time as well, really clever character design, you know. Bringing in a lot of sturdy, strong elements and repeating them throughout the mark. And of course, you then understand, hey, this character is your very strong, sturdy type. And you're getting a sense of the personality, and that's just through simple things. Whether it's obviously on the actual body of the character, but you know, also embodied in the weapons, embodied in the general facial structure, and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, more unique character design there, that's for sure. And uh, it's communicating things, which is great. Also, some slicer heads being used there for the feet on this mark works very well. But a lot of stuff working very well in this mock here. It's super cool to see. So nice work, Crow, and nice work, everyone else, in this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series all about Toa. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to let me know your thoughts on any of my social media. There's links to all of that in the description below because, unfortunately, you can't leave a comment on the episodes anymore thanks to the COPA law changes. But there's other places you can leave your thoughts if you want to. Additionally, in the description below are links to all the mocks you saw in today's episodes. Be sure to check out some of the other stuff these guys have done. They're talented builders, and yeah, they deserve a little bit more love that you can give them. Additionally, if you want to see your own stuff in one of the episodes of the Bionicle Inspiration series, you can. If you submit it to the email you're currently seeing on your screen, you can submit as many pictures as you want, or you can submit as few pictures as you want, or, you know, a whole backstory, or lots of information about it, or just a couple words, whatever you want to submit. Put it in the email. I'll add it to the list and one day it'll appear on the show. But of course, I've got a lot of emails and submissions to work through. So patience is key, but don't let that discourage you. Submit away. Otherwise, that's it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and you liked seeing some pretty cool Toa mocks. But maybe now it's time for you to get building. Hopefully you've been inspired and you yourself can build some super cool Toa mocks. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Happy building and bye for now.